I call the member for Wills. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I support the measures in this bill, and I support the amendment moved by the Shadow Minister. Uh, these measures are designed to improve regulatory oversight of the sector. Uh, regrettably, the actions of unscrupulous registered training organisations and brokers have had serious effects on vulnerable individuals. People have been left with large debts and no qualification at all or useless qualifications. And I think it is nothing short of a national scandal that the government must deal with as a matter of urgency to ensure that the protection of students is prioritised. There has been an explosion of cases of unscrupulous registered training organisations preying on vulnerable students and signing them up for large vet fee help debts. In many cases, the students are not even aware that they have signed up for a course, let alone debts of tens of thousands of dollars. The problem is exacerbated by registered training organisations employing brokers to recruit students on their behalf and then attempting to distance themselves from the actions of the brokers. This bill takes some steps to put responsibility on the registered training organisations for the actions of their brokers. There is also a change to allow more rapid response to quality and standards issues by the minister and the regulator. The growth of vet fee help has exceeded all projections, with more than $1.6 billion allocated last year. The Grattan Institute has warned that 40 per cent of vocational loans may never be repaid. This becomes a financial burden to the Commonwealth, and it needs to be addressed. The education industry in Australia is highly fragmented. There are almost 5,000 registered training organisations that offer vocational education and over 11,000 that offer language training and other educational services. The number has been growing since the federal government extended student loans to the vocational sector. As reported by the ABC, teachers and education advocates are warning of shonky operators within the private training college sector saying the federal government needs to do more to get rid of spruikers manipulating and misleading students. The Australian Skills Quality Authority, which regulates the registered training organisations, says it has received almost 4,000 complaints and conducted 3,000 audits since it was established in 2011. 4,000 complaints in less than four years. An astonishing record of failure. Many teachers, advocates and other colleges have indicated that the complaints being referred to the authority seem to be falling on deaf ears. The authority has stated that some of their investigations could be lengthy. In a 19 October 2014 ABC report, Sally Thompson, the chief executive of Adult Learning Australia, the peak body for adult and community education, said she was offended both as an educator and as a Footscray resident when she saw disadvantaged students being recruited to training companies outside her local Centrelink office. Ms Thompson stated, Our members often deal with people with quite low skills. They often deal with people with English as a second language, people with literacy difficulties, and they have been telling us for a long time that they are just inundated with these kinds of spruikers. Spruikers hang out in places where they think marginalised people will be. We've had a couple of providers that have gone to our website, copied our whole website, then advertised our courses for vet fee help. I just thought they were really misleading and designed to fool people into purchasing a product under false pretenses. There were very big letters saying zero fees up front. No mention at all that the person will be hit with a debt of $10,000 at the end of this program. Now, most people who are English as a second language learners wouldn't know what vet fee help was, much less that you'll be saddled with a $10,000 debt. Deputy Speaker, Mr Boyd Sparrow and his partner set up distance training college San Goanna in 2009 because they wanted to get quality employees for their tourism business. Their business name and information has been misappropriated twice by unscrupulous companies. They stated, we've had a couple of providers that have gone to our website copied our whole website, uh, then uh, pasted our website onto another website, then advertised our courses for vet fee help. The reason we caught it out is that we don't actually have vet fee help funding. The company had to get lawyers involved to get other companies to cease using their name. 
However, it did not stop their reputation being damaged amongst employers, and they now scan the internet every day to check that their details have not been stolen. Uh, what a disgraceful situation. The Australian Skills Quality Authority Chief Commissioner, Chris Robinson, has stated that the regulator has cancelled, suspended or refused the registration of 350 colleges since 2011. The ABC reported in 2014 that childcare centres have now also started using unofficial blacklists of training providers that they will not use because the graduate quality is so low. There has been an explosion in the number of trainers offering certificate threes and diplomas in childcare after the government made qualifications mandatory. Childcare centre operators have told the ABC many operate as tick and flick organisations where students effectively buy their qualification. In many cases, it has left students who spend up to $4,500 on courses unsuitable for employment. Operators said children also lost out, with young graduates being unable to properly interact with infants during critical formative years. Students and operators provided the ABC with the names of six organisations with questionable training practices. These include offering the year-long Certificate three course in eight weeks, admitting to monitoring student placements by phone and online courses without sufficient supervision for work placements. However, all still remain accredited training organisations with the government regulator. In 2014, the authority cancelled the registration of one childcare course provider, the Community Training College in Queensland. The authority has an ongoing strategic industry review of training for the childcare and early learning sector, and it told the Productivity Commission inquiry into childcare that it audited 46 trainers and found four out of five did not meet regulations. Four out of five. After being given the chance to fix problems, one in five still did not meet the standard. Little wonder then that the Childcare Workers' Union, United Voice, has called for a national inquiry into childcare training, and United Voice says it is time for a national investigation into childcare training. The National Secretary, David O'Byrne, says that too many providers run tick-and-flick courses where poor training was done at high cost. He says it's clear that the regulation is not working. He says we want an immediate review across the country of registered training organisations providing training in the early years. It's not acceptable every couple of years or when there's a complaint to go and investigate a company. Families want to know when they place their children in these early learning environments that their children are being supported, that they're being educated and cared for. A, tr a child's brain development is crucial. The early years are the most important years. And indeed they are. Last month, a private college in Sydney, Australian College Broadway, was accused of claiming federal student training loans for pupils without appropriate skills. Former staff alleged that if students wanted to leave the college, the college hampered their attempts to withdraw from a course by either tearing up a letter or ignoring phone calls. The college, which offers hairdressing, beauty therapy and makeup courses, rejected the allegations. However, young single mother Samantha Saxton said she graduated from the college without the appropriate skills and has had to go back to TAFE and start again. Ms Saxton now has a $33,000 vet fee help debt from the college. Her employer said Samantha was unable to do many things she would expect from a graduate, and Ms Saxton said she complained at least ten times about the quality of the training during the course, but nothing was done to rectify the situation. And that college has received more than $50 million from federal government hex-style loans training since 2009. Deputy Speaker, unscrupulous training colleges are also targeting people with disabilities and the homeless in order to cash in on government education funding. The ABC obtained evidence that some colleges are recruiting people with intellectual disabilities to costly diploma-level courses funded with expensive vet fee-help training loans. However, this training is totally unsuited as those being targeted have low education and skill levels and high care needs, which means they will be unlikely to ever complete the courses. Marketeers have been spotted outside Centrelink offices and referral services for the homeless and drug addicted. 
There are reports of telephone agents obtaining student details from job websites or disability programs in order to target them for new enrolments. Students can borrow up to $90,000 under the VET fee help loans, which they start to repay once they earn more than $53,000 a year. And Jackie Whitehead, who is the mother of 24-year-old Lucas, who has a diagnosed intellectual disability and autism spectrum disorder, became suspicious when he was recruited to do a business course at Aspire College after being targeted outside Centrelink. The Adelaide man completed year 10 with a special life skills qualification for people with a disability. Once Lucas was struggling, Mrs Whitehead rang the school to inform them he had a disability and to seek extensions for his assignments. The college's response was to sell Lucas another course and now he has an $18,000 vet fee help debt. Single mother Rebecca Warfield was signed up to a $40,000 hairdressing course with a Sydney-based training school. Months after signing and being unable to attend classes due to personal issues, she went to see her accountant and was advised that she had a $27,000 debt and the college was chasing her for $10,000. She does not read contracts because she has dyslexia, however, had she been able to read the fine print, she did not actually enrol in a hairdressing course but rather a theory-based salon management course, a distinction easily lost by Mrs Warfield because of her dyslexia. In my home state of Victoria, the movement of resources and students away from TAFE and into private training colleges of dubious and variable quality has been a disaster. In a media release of 25 February this year, the Victorian st government stated that numbers of employers in the automotive industry have been disqualified from hiring apprentices following a Victorian Registration and Qualifications Authority investigation into low-quality training. The Minister for Training and Skills, Steve Herbert, said the disqualifications followed an investigation of 115 employers in the automotive industry that checked whether 160 apprentices were being properly supervised and trained. The quality of training plummeted under the former Liberal government's cuts to the vocational education and training system. Eight employers in Dandenong, Burwood, Albion, Campbellfield, Mitcham, Preston, Sunshine North and Glen Iris were disqualified from hiring apprentices. Sixty con training contracts between employers and apprentices were cancelled and a further 39 contracts voluntarily cancelled. The apprentices were all enrolled with a common training provider and those wanting to continue their apprenticeship have been offered support to continue their training with another provider. Deputy Speaker, the Victorian Labor government's recently announced review of quality assurance in Victoria's VET system will recommend a new framework so that all training providers that deliver government-funded training meet quality standards. This will feed into the McKenzie review, which will recommend a model of sustainable, high-quality training across the training sector. A compliance report by Victoria's Education Department showed that during 2013 payments were placed on hold for 29 registered training organisations until identified issues were investigated. Private colleges have been exposed for offering free iPads and laptops for students to sign on to taxpayer subsidised courses they often do not complete. And the value of HEC-style loans for vocational students has blown out from $325 million in 2012 to $1.5 billion last year, double the expected rate of growth. Enrolments in these diplomas surged by 170 per cent from 2012 to 2013 and by a further 195 per cent the following year. The 56,000 extra enrolments equates to $770 million in federal government loans. Deputy Speaker, Whilst the bill is designed to improve oversight of the sector, it does not address the damage to individuals that has already occurred or propose action to engage with the community to minimise future problems. The flowering of second-rate training and scams that we have witnessed has been a disgrace, and we need to take concerted action to improve and protect standards and make sure that the qualifications and training actually leads to work. I thank the member for Wills. The question is that the amendment be agreed.